Greetings students, this screencast is going to give you a sense of what to expect on the AP test and how best to prepare for it. So let's get rolling. Um, first of all, the exam structure. Uh, there, as you know, are both multiple choice and free response questions. Um, there's going to be 60 multiple choice questions um, and six free response questions. Two of these are going to be what are considered long questions, which are about 10 points. Uh, and then four are going to be what they call short questions, which are worth four points. Um, each section you get 90 minutes to do, and each section counts as 50% of your overall score. Um, note that time tends to be tight on this exam, so be prepared for that and uh, be okay with it when it happens. <laughs> um, in terms of the topics, Hopefully this doesn't look too uh, surprising to you. We had eight units this year, and here are the eight units as they appear on the exam. You even get a sense of what uh, the weight of each of these units is. And if you look at these numbers, it really is pretty equal um, across the different units. If I had to say one was emphasized a little bit more than others, it would probably be evolution. Um, which gets up to 20%, and that's because evolution just sort of ties everything in biology together. But overall, um, pretty equally distributed. Um, there's not one topic that you should really emphasize over others. Um, if you want a more detailed look at these, um, here it is. So <laughs> note that you can click on each of these, and it will take you to the official um, what we call the objectives for each unit, um, which are what the AP people tell you that you're supposed to know and be able to do um, for the test. And so you've seen all these before um, if you've been checking those objectives within each Schoology folder, uh, but that is the, the official detailed look. Um, in general, unit one, um, here's kind of what we did by chapter almost. We started the year by reviewing chemistry, and then we focused in on those macromolecules, the carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Unit two is cell structure and function. We began by looking at just what is a cell, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic, and then plant versus animal. What are the differences between these groups? What are the names of all those organelles? Um, then we looked at cell membranes and the structure of them and how they are enable transport of materials between the inside and outside of the cell. So specifically diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, active transport, and what we call bulk transport, which is basically endo and exocytosis. Unit three was all about cellular energetics. So we began by looking at energy and enzymes, asking these two critical questions. Can a reaction occur? And will a reaction occur? Um, for, a rea for the question of can it occur, delta G is the key value, and we need a negative delta G for a reaction to occur. And if it doesn't have a negative delta G, then it needs to be coupled with another reaction that does have a negative delta G. Um, will a reaction occur? The key term there is activation energy. And you hopefully remember that enzymes help lower the activation energy so that a reaction that can occur will occur. <laughs> um, we then looked at energy in heterotrophs, things that eat other things. We looked at cellular respiration, which consisted of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, and then fermentation. And then energy in autotrophs, which is basically photosynthesis, including the light dependent reactions and the light independent reactions. Um, these are obviously complex biochemical processes, so be sure to check Schoology for some overview screencasts that, that kind of recap those two topics pretty thoroughly. Uh, cell communication and the cell cycle. So cell communication, we began by looking at homeostasis and the concepts of negative versus positive feedback. Um, and then we got into the weeds of cell signaling, looking at both steroid hormones and water soluble hormones and, and how messages from outside of the cell can sort of cause changes inside the cell. Uh, the cell cycle, um, essentially, you know, we think of this as mostly mitosis, but remember the cell cycle consists of interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. And then we looked at the regulation of the cell cycle and how cancer can result when that regulation is disrupted. Unit five was heredity. So we began with Mendel's laws. Um, we learned how to do Punnett squares and then began to analyze more complex patterns of inheritance like incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple alleles, <clears throat> that was like blood groups where there's A, B, and O, polygenic inheritance, 
and environmental effects. Um, with meiosis, we began by looking at just how meiosis contributes to genetic diversity. We looked at just the process of how meiosis takes place, making sure we really distinguish meiosis from mitosis, because while there are similarities between those two, there are some really critical differences that you need to make sure you're aware of. Um, and then we looked at errors that can occur during meiosis that leads to mutations, um, such as changes in chromosome number and structure. <clears throat> chromosome number being things like aneuploidy, polyploidy, structure changes being like um, uh, translocations and inversions, deletions, that kind of thing. Um, the chromosomal basis of inheritance, uh, we then kind of looked at, hey, these factors Mendel was talking about are actually located on these things called chromosomes in the cell. And we looked at both sex link traits and autosomal linkage. Unit 6, uh, we spread across two parts. So all of Unit 6 is 12 to 16%. We split it into two just because it is such a big um, topic. Um, part 1 for us, we looked at just DNA structure and replication. Um, and then protein synthesis, which includes transcription, mRNA processing, translation, mutations. Again, both of these, all of these topics, pretty complicated biochemical pathways. And so again, Schoology has some videos that will walk you through those details pretty thoroughly if you want to revisit them. Um, in the second part of this unit, we looked at the regulation of gene expression. Uh, prokaryotes, we focused on operons as the main uh, regulatory mechanism there. Eukaryotes have many, many more different types of uh, regulation, methylation and acetylation of chromatin that cause it to coil up or uncoil, uh, transcription factors, enhancers, alternative splicing, microRNAs, and, and others. Um, <clears throat> and then we kind of looked at embryonic development as an example of a lot of those regulatory things. We then looked at the genetics of viruses and bacteria. So we looked at just what is a virus, first of all, because it's not quite a cell. It's not a cell at all, actually. Uh, and then we looked at how they reproduce through the lytic and lysogenic cycles. For bacteria, we looked at how transformation, transduction, and conjugation are all ways that they have of, um, of exchanging DNA and creating genetic diversity. Um, then finally, we looked at DNA technology. So creating recombinant DNA, the polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis, DNA sequencing, cloning, stem cells. Unit seven is evolution. Um, we started by looking at Charles Darwin and this idea of natural selection. We looked at all the evidence supporting the idea of evolution. Uh, we talked about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and how um, sort of the mathematics behind changes in gene frequencies, um, focusing on these five mechanisms, natural selection, mutations, gene flow, non-random mating, and genetic drift, all of which are going to change gene frequencies and therefore trigger evolution. Speciation was basically the production of new species, phylogeny, um, <clears throat> which is sort of making these cladograms or phylogenetic trees to sort of look at, you know, the actual pathway that uh, creatures have branched off from one another, and then sort of capping it off with just the history of life on Earth. Finally, ecology, looking at the interactions of organisms with each other and with the environment, focusing on different levels of those interactions with the behavior of individual organisms through populations, communities, ecosystems, and closing with human impacts on the environment. So again, you can click on the um, essential knowledge or learning objectives um, by clicking on these little links on these preceding slides. Um, okay, the other part of the exam, that's kind of the content. The other part of it though, is the process skills, what they call science practices. These are skills that you have been developing all year long. And the exam really is focused on you utilizing these science practices. Um, don't forget that part of the science practices are the mathematical skills that you've been developing. And so you've got the formulas and equation sheet that we've been using all year and that you will have available for use on the exam. So here's kind of a list of the science practices. Um, practice one, concept explanation, the idea of just explaining how things work. Um, visual representations has you look at a diagram um, or a chart or something to try and interpret what's happening. We've certainly done a lot with that. <clears throat> Questions and methods. This is kind of sort of the, the traditional scientific process, kind of a formal lab thing where you, um, you know, pose a question, state a hypothesis, design an experiment, collect observations, that kind of thing. 
Um, representing and describing data would be kind of like the post lab part. So building graphs, looking at data tables, that kind of thing. Statistical tests and data analysis, um, you know, calculating means, ratios, percentages, using math in general, <laughs> uh, the standard uh, confidence intervals, so the little standard error bars that we've been putting on our bar graphs to see if things are statistically different, um, chi-square analysis, and then just, you know, null hypothesis, do we accept or reject it? And then finally, argumentation, simply the idea of making a claim and supporting it with evidence. So hopefully you look at those and you're like, yeah, we've pretty much been doing that all year. Um, through POGO activities, case studies, application-based questions on your homework packets and tests, practice AP essay questions, practice AP multiple choice questions, and the lab work that we did. So we've really been hitting these hard. Um, in terms of lab, there's no like official labs that we are required to do to prepare you for the AP test, but there are some sort of recommended ones. And so I'll just kind of go through some of the major labs that we did just to kind of remind you. So we began the year looking at um, basically as just kind of an introduction to the science practices really. Um, so we added drops of different liquids onto pennies and then we saw how many drops were added and we sort of learned how to do these error bars and how to interpret them. We did a lab on osmosis and diffusion where we put little potato cores into different solutions and then we measured their mass and we saw that if we put them in pure water they tended to gain a lot of mass if we put them in a really sugary solution they tended to lose a lot of mass uh, we did a lab on enzyme activity where we um, we looked at the browning of apples so we use these uh, colorimeters and uh, uh, a substrate called catechol and then we had an enzyme and we sort of got these little graphs to see the rate of reaction as the enzyme converted this clear catechol into the brown substance um, that you see in fruit. And then we tested the effect of different things, substrate concentration, enzyme concentration, changing temperature, changing pH, and even a competitive inhibitor. Photosynthesis lab, um, we use these colorimeters again and we basically use this substance called DPIP, which is typically blue, um, to simulate photosynthesis. So when it accepts an electron, when light um, hits the chloroplast and um, excites an electron, this DPIP accepts the electron and then that causes a color change and makes it clear. And so as these little cuvettes sat in front of the light source, they got clearer and clearer and clearer. And again, we measured that. Um, with the uh, colorimeters. And then we kind of looked at an, uh, the effect of a variable like color, light intensity, CO2 concentration, boiling the chloroplast to see how that affected it. Unit five, we did this kind of paper pencil activity to sort of analyze the results of crosses and, and figure out what, what mode of inheritance is it? Is it a monohybrid, a dihybrid, sex linked? What's going on there? Uh, and then chi square was a big part of this. That's where we introduced the chi square test. Um, unit six, we did biotechnology where we sort of made bacteria glow through transformation. That was pretty cool. We also did um, restriction enzyme analysis of DNA where we use um, gel electrophoresis to figure out where is the source of contamination uh, in our five layer bean dip. Unit seven um, was where we used no cards with either the big A or little A to simulate Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. Um, and we kind of moved around the room and we traded cards. I'm a big A, you're a little A, and we sort of created multiple generations of offspring to kind of see what happens if we uh, try and simulate hardy weinberg equilibrium or natural selection, heterozygote advantage, genetic drift. Um, we also did this one using the BLAST software where we uploaded DNA sequences to try and figure out the relationships of this fossil. Um, and then finally, unit eight, um, we did a fruit fly behavior analysis. This really was more about um, again, uh, practicing with the scientific practices and um, less about caring what fruit flies like. <laughs> and then finally, energy dynamics. This is a paper pencil activity where we basically tried to figure out as caterpillars eat these Brussels sprouts, how much of the energy of Brussels sprouts actually makes it into the caterpillar. So there are lots of review resources available to you. The College Board has some official ones. There's a practice exam available to you. And then we have many online resources posted on Schoology, including multiple practice, multiple choice, free response, 
and then review video. So check that AP test review folder on Schoology. And then finally, you can click here for a detailed summary of the exam structure, including all this.